Hey guys, what's going on? It's Travis here with JT Wealth, and in today's video, we are going to talk about eight ways the rich view the world differently than the average person, and how we can adopt some of those lessons to improve our own quality of life. So let's get into it. I'm probably going to hear from Julie later for using her tagline, but welcome back everybody. And if you're new here, thanks for checking out the channel. So let's take a look at today's video topics. Today we're going to talk about the eight ways the rich view the world differently than the average person. And then we're going to look at some of those life-changing lessons, some with quotes that I pulled from Rich Dad Poor Dad creator Robert Kiyosaki as additional support. And then we're going to go on to using motivators to fuel your drive. Now briefly I'll explain why I say use a motivator to fuel your drive. Motivation to me is almost useless. It's very temporary. It lasts after you watch Rocky when you want to go for a run or after you watch whatever the fun movie was that made you interested in a specific topic you otherwise wouldn't normally care about, right? So drive is very different, whether it's something for your career, sports, or finance in this instance, having that drive every day is what's going to make you successful, not motivation. That's very temporary. And before we get into today's video, just your friendly reminder, if you like the video, if you enjoy the content, please leave us a thumbs up and a comment in the comment section down below. If you really like the channel, please subscribe and join the community. And of course, if you are here to see Julie, remember you can check her out tomorrow morning on the Tip Ranks channel where every morning, Monday through Friday, she does a pre-morning market update on the Tip Ranks channels. And then sometimes you'll see her on Tip Ranks throughout the day or occasionally here on JT Wealth as well. All right, and the last piece of administrative news, if you're looking for a new broker, please check out the Weeble link in the description down below where you can get two free stocks for signing up and funding your new investment account. All right, let's get into today's video. So here's an older article, guys. It's from October 2016, and it's off of Make It, written by Kathleen Elkins, and it's eight ways rich people view the world differently than the average person. Now, the author talks about self-made millionaire Steve Seibold spent 26 years interviewing some of the wealthiest people in the world before condensing his findings into his book, How Rich People Think. He found that the secret to getting rich is not in the mechanics of money, but in the level of thinking that generates it. In addition to having larger bank accounts, balances than most, rich people have different beliefs, philosophies, and strategies. According to Seibold, there are endless ways the rich view the world differently from the masses. Here we've highlighted eight. All right, so now, like I said in the beginning, as we go through some of these eight lessons, occasionally you're going to see quotes from Rich Dad Poor Dad author Robert Kiyosaki. And I added those in there to emphasize a point, guys. That book genuinely changed the way I thought about money. More importantly, it changed the way I thought about myself, recognizing that the problem didn't exist outside of me. The problem existed right here. I had to figure out how to adapt so that I could be more effective in how I handled my finances. So when I saw the article on eight different ways that wealthy view money or think about the world differently, it just hit home. I knew it was going to connect with that rich dad, poor dad thought process. So I joined some of those quotes into here and hopefully you guys can see why I did that. All right, number one, rich people believe being wealthy is a right, while the average person believes being wealthy is a privilege. World-class thinkers know in a capitalist country they have the right to be rich if they're willing to create massive value for others, Siebold writes. The masses think getting rich is reserved for a lucky few. The distinction in thinking leads the middle class to the lottery and the world class to work, he says. The wealthy believe if they make life better or easier for others, it's their right to be rich. I want to say that again. It is your right to be rich. One of the quotes I really enjoyed from Rich Dad Poor Dad, and I'm phrasing, was referencing financial literacy, and it was something to the effect of, poverty is just having more problems than solutions. And maybe we could even say that finding those solutions for yourself is a way out of lower class and into middle class, whereas finding solutions to other people's problems is your gateway from the middle class to the upper class. The second way the wealthy think different is that rich people believe starting a business is the fastest way to make money, while the average person believes starting a business is risky. The truth is, having a job is no safer than owning a business. As counterintuitive as this may seem, people who work for themselves have the power to proactively seek out business and increase revenues at will. Of course, there are risks involved in starting a business, but wealthy people know the greatest risk is not betting on themselves. 
While rich people launch businesses and profit from them, average people settle for the steady paycheck and therefore miss out on the chance to generate a fortune. The masses almost guarantee themselves a life of financial mediocrity by staying in a job with modest salary and yearly pay raises. One of the Robert Kiyosaki quotes that fits this perfectly follows. He says, Rich Dad explained this point of view over and over, which I call lesson number one. The poor and the middle class work for money. The rich have money work for them. Now, starting a business doesn't have to be running out and getting a franchise of Arby's or whatever the case may be, right? It can be your side hustle. Your life outside of work is your business. And treating that life and that business the same way you treat your duties at work is going to have an immense impact. Never work harder for anybody else than you're willing to work for yourself. You go to work and you spend a lot of time trying to figure out how you are going to do the best you can at that job to make somebody else money. And then oftentimes we come home and we sit on the couch and we watch Netflix instead of trying to figure out how to do that same and push those same metrics towards improving our quality of life and improving our business. So how do we make money work for us? Well, first you have to picture each dollar you have as an employee and find the best way to employ that individual to make you more money. Regardless of the investment path you choose, you're not spending the money, you are utilizing that money and building your assets to make more money for yourself down the road. All right guys, number three, rich people believe the wealthy are more savvy, while the average person believes the wealthy are smarter. If the key to building wealth was excellent grades in school, every summa cum laude graduate would be rich. Amassing money has more to do with the street smart savvy than your ability to memorize information and excel on exams. How do you become more savvy? Get inside the heads of people who already are rich. Find out what they think and believe about money. I heard a joke once that was, I was going to study philosophy, but then I realized I'd just end up thinking deep thoughts about being broke. And the underlying thought there is it doesn't matter if you have a bachelor's degree, a master's degree, or a doctorate, if your efforts and if your knowledge hasn't been based in finance or in wealth, then it really doesn't help you improve those aspects of your life. There's no doubt that medical doctors are very intelligent, very smart people. That doesn't mean they're very financially savvy. I've seen doctors come into the bank, they're mid-30s, they have high six-figure incomes, two homes, but they need a loan to make it until the next part of the year when they're going to have a little bit more liquid income. So that's not financially savvy. All right, number four, guys. Rich people believe building wealth takes a team, while the average person believes building wealth is an individual effort. The world class knows it takes a team to build wealth, and they focus much of their effort on finding the right people to leverage their actions and ideas. The greatest fortunes are built through the collective mental and physical contributions of a world class team. He contends that who you surround yourself with has more of an effect on your net worth than you might think. Did any of you have kids? You ever try to explain to them, be careful who you hang out with? Because if you hang out with five morons, there's a strong likelihood you're the sixth. There's plenty of memes out there right now pushing this same thought process, right? If you hang out with five geniuses or five business owners, there's a strong likelihood you'll be the sixth in that category. And building a team here just makes common sense. Most jobs that I can think of are designed to make somebody money, right? Whether they're selling you something or providing a service, all of it funnels back to somebody making a lot of money. So you have a lot of professionals, doctors, but lawyers, accountants, financial managers, real estate investors, things like that, whose main purpose in life is to make money. So if you surround yourself with that kind of individual and build a team of people who are focused towards your success, then you can utilize the knowledge and skill sets of those professionals to make you money. First-hand experience, I can tell you guys, getting a full-time CPA accountant to work with you as a part of my team has been one of the best things I've ever done. The quote that I liked from Robert Kiyosaki that fit this best as follows. An intelligent person hires people who are more intelligent than he is. I think that's perfect. Now on to number five. Rich people believe making money is simple. While the average person believes making money is very complicated, the masses have always thought that rich people are smarter, luckier, or more educated. Of course, none of these things is true. The rich know that money flows from ideas and problem solving. The bigger the solution, the bigger the paycheck. 
Making money may not be easy, but it is simple. There are no mystery to getting rich, but this limiting belief stops most people from ever trying. Have you ever heard the old saying, whether you think you can or you can't, you're right? This fits that perfectly, guys. Whether you want to or don't want to make money, that is what will happen. Of course, that want has to be met with actual forward progression on what it is you're trying to achieve. You can't just sit on the couch and want to be wealthy and expect it to come true. They say the will to succeed is nothing without the will to prepare to succeed. So you have to be willing to put in the work. All right, number six, guys. Rich people believe money is earned through thinking, while the average person believes money is earned through time and labor. The middle class think about money in linear terms and believe the only way to earn more money is to work more hours. The wealthy know big money requires thinking about it in non-linear terms. The rich know that creative thinking is the highest paid skill in the world. Training your mind to find solutions to difficult problems is the real secret to making money. Robert Kiyosaki said, too many people forget to mind their own business. They spend their lives minding someone else's business and making that person rich. Hard work and loyalty are extremely important. I'm not going to say they're not. 50, 60 years ago, that same hard work and loyalty that you might show an employer now would have finished your career at Ford or GM. You would have seen an annuity or a retirement as a result of that. Today, you're not going to see that same benefit. So what you have to consider when putting your hard work and loyalty into something is who is the end beneficiary? Is it you or is it your employer? Being a loyal and solid employee are fantastic character traits, and you can't take anything away from them. But what you need to do is utilize that same ethic at home in your own personal life, building your personal business, your personal brand, the one that's going to follow you after you leave that career. On to number seven. Rich people believe money is liberating, while the average person believes money is controlling. The rich see money as a positive tool that has the power to create freedom and opportunity for themselves and their families. By contrast, the average person sees money as the great oppressor. While the world class sees money as a critical resource that opens up endless possibilities, the middle class is demonizing it and denying its importance. With a mindset like this, it is it any wonder most people don't have much? I don't know about you guys, I grew up in the late 80s and early 90s in a low to middle class family under the illusion of the honorable middle class. I remember growing up saying things like, I just want to do something that matters. I don't care if I make any money. And while that may seem noble in your youth, when you grow up, you start to realize that having a little bit of money and setting yourself up for success allows you to take care of your family. And beyond that, it allows you to take care of a lot more. Whether it's tithing at church or just donating to causes that you believe in, setting yourself up for success will allow you to do that a lot easier than somebody who's just scratching to make it, right? Somebody who's just making it paycheck to paycheck. And the Robert Kiyosaki quote I felt best fit here is as follows. We all have tremendous potential and we all are blessed with gifts. Yet the one thing that holds all of us back is some degree of self-doubt. Every single successful or highly successful individual in the world at some point started by just taking that first step, right? So all we have to do is believe in ourselves, take that first step and just not quit. Whether you're learning to ride a bike training for sports in high school, training for the military, or building a huge financial conglomerate. It all starts with just believing in yourself and taking that first step. All right, guys, number eight, our last lesson here. Rich people believe in working for fulfillment, while the average person believes in working for money. The rich have always known working for the sole purpose of making money is the worst strategy for building wealth. Don't look for jobs with the greatest salary potential. Rather, focus on work that has the most fulfillment potential. Once you find it, invest so much heart and soul into your work that you become one of the most competent people in your field. You'll be rewarded with uncommon wealth. Now, I think this one can be taken a couple of ways. If you're doing a job you don't care about just for the money, you could be so stressed out and tired at the end of every workday that you come home and just are basically useless, right? You're not going to bring the same value to your personal business, to your personal brand, nor are you going to bring that same value and care to your family life. So in the end, it's not a very successful approach. But finding a job you feel passionately about can help you go through the steps every day of waking up, getting to work, doing the best you can, 
becoming somebody who's believed to be an expert in their field and then becoming successful there, right? That also allows you to come home, take on the tasks that you have at home without all that added stress of working a job you hate. And beyond that, just learning to be passionate about something will allow you to find the other parts of your life that you're passionate about. If you're passionate about your job, hopefully you'll find that same passion in setting you and your family up for success so you can come home and focus there as well. All right guys, so that was the eight ways the wealthy think differently. Now let's touch on what I mentioned earlier in the video about utilizing motivation to fuel your drive. And how I've been liking to do that recently is through Instagram, believe it or not. I love all the finance and wealth motivational Instagram accounts that are out there these days, right? It really helps you stay focused, stay on track. If you can go up every day and look at these, it was like when I was working out in high school, the Marine Corps, I had all these pictures of guys all over the mirror, right? And that was just my way of every day waking up, seeing that somebody who's in better shape than me, somebody who's achieved something I hadn't and keeping that drive and that push to keep going and, and, and achieve the goals that I had set out for myself. So now I'm going to just really quick show you guys five of these Instagram channels that I like to follow uh, for the motivational content that they provide. Again, that is temporary, that is short term, that is something that you're going to utilize in the moment for maybe the half hour you might remember it, right? But it's going to feed your drive. So let's look at these. All right, the first one up is Entrepreneur Dose. And this image is super cool, right? How to fix your finances. Print out last month's bank statement. Highlight every single expense that was a want. Calculate the total amount. Next month, reduce your wants by 50%. Increase your savings by 25%. Increase your investments by 25%. Really solid advice that you can help you know, improve your financial situation with and perhaps something you hadn't considered. Next on the list is female in finance. So here she's got a really cool graph talking about buying a new Tesla, right? So the MSRP of a new Tesla Model 3, $36,990. Estimated monthly payments of $665. Or instead of buying the vehicle, invest $665 a month. Five years later, your investments have grown to $50,913, assuming you're getting that 4% APR, right? So now you've just increased the value instead of buying the car. You now have $50,000 instead of spending $36,000 over what would have assumed have been the same five-year period. If you save that same amount for 15 years, you're seeing $264,965. 30 years later, if you did not buy that Tesla, but continued to save $665 a month, you'd have over a million dollars. See, that's pretty cool. Next up is making sense of finance. So if your net worth is under 100 grand, the fastest way to increase your net worth is through lifestyle choices, not investment returns. Saving just 300 extra a month puts an extra $3,600 in your pocket per year. However, a 7% return on $50,000 invested is only $3,500. The lesson here is just don't count on the investments to allow you to save more money and build your wealth. Change your lifestyle, increase your savings and your investments, and eventually that's when those investments will become super, super beneficial. All right, moving on to the next one I like here, Entrepreneur's Hustle. How rich people budget. A millionaire spends 25% of his money on needs, only 10% on wants, while investing 65% of his money. Whereas the average person is going to spend 40% on needs, 55% of their money on what they want, and only invest 5%. I think this one is a perfect Instagram post talking about the same stuff that this video is talking about, right? The different ways people view money, think about money, and utilize their money. All right, and the last Instagram one for your motivational purposes today is Coingrams, where the dividend growth investor said, JP Morgan calculated that if investors missed the top 10 days in the year over the past 20 years, their return was cut in half. That's why investors need to focus on time in the market, not timing the market. I know that's something Julie has harped on excessively, but let me say it again, right? If you miss the top 10 days in any year, you're missing out on half the profit. So if you're one of those guys that's moving your money around a lot, hopefully that's working out for you, but the statistics say there's a likelihood that you're missing out on something, right? Like Warren Buffett says, the best investment time is forever. So believe in these companies, otherwise don't invest in them, then just put your money in, set there, and let it grow for you. 
All right, that's pretty much it for today's video, guys. That's the eight ways wealthy people think about money differently than the average person. Some of the lessons that we can take from that with quotes from Robert Kiyosaki. And then looking at some motivational Instagram posts to help keep you on track throughout the day and keep your drive in the right direction. Hopefully you found some value in today's video, enjoyed some of the content. If you did, please remember to give us a thumbs up, You know, let your friends know about the channel, leave a comment down below, subscribe if you haven't already. Um, if you're new here, thanks for checking us out. Again, you can see Julie Monday through Friday morning on Tip Rank's channel. Um, and last disclaimer, I'm not a financial advisor. None of this is financial advice. This is for entertainment and uh, informational purposes only, right? I'm not responsible for what you do with your money. So do your own due diligence, plan accordingly, set yourselves up for success. Hopefully you found some value today and uh, thanks for being with me. <laughs> I don't know how many people caught it, but you can ignore the backup beer. That one's gone. But uh, thanks again, guys. Bottoms up.